everybody, Kyle here with Spicer Designs. Welcome back to the shit. Damn it! I'm hurt. Damn it! Whew. That was embarrassing. Today's segment of Spicer Designs, we are going to be working on Fusion 360 in relation to the Langmuir Crossfire Pro CNC plasma table. Now before we get started, full disclosure, I am not an expert on Fusion 360, I'm not an expert on the Crossfire Pro plasma table, and I'm not claiming to be. I'm just sharing information that I've learned over my experience the past three years of owning my plasma table and working on Fusion 360. And by all means, if you know a better way to do what I'm doing here today, let us know in the comments, we'd all appreciate it. Anyways, it's going to be a very similar informational step-by-step -step video just like the easy button video right here. This video did pretty well for me, got quite a bit of views and it seemed to be helpful to a lot of people. So if you did find that video helpful and you've not subscribed to the channel yet, please do. It doesn't cost you anything and it really helps me out. I'm really trying to hit a million subscribers by the end of the week, but I'll settle with 10,000. Help me get to 10,000, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, all right, so what do we have going on for today's video? Well, one struggle that I had when I was learning this while I was making custom logos and signs for people was they would have a very specific font in their logo and I didn't know how to find it or how to make it, how to get it on Fusion 360. So eventually I did figure out a way to do it. Not saying that it's the best way or the only way, but it's just the way that I do it. And there were even times where I would literally use the CAD tools to draw the lettering from scratch and it was very, very time consuming. Damn it. So today what we're going to do, being that I do so much work on the Langmuir Crossfire Pro, is we are going to try to find the font for Langmuir Systems right here, download it, get it onto Fusion 360 and actually create a drawing using their font and mimic their logo. Now, if you're not familiar with the Langmuir CNC plasma tables, this one is the Crossfire Pro. It is roughly three foot by four foot cutting surface. And I've probably paid for this machine 15 times now with all of the work that I've done on it. This is not my main source of income. This is just something that I do on the weekends and after work on the weekdays. Now I will leave links for Langmuir's site in the description and I'll also pin one up there in the comments. If you use that link, it will automatically knock off $100 at checkout or you can use the promo code Spicer Designs, which will also give you the $100 off. These machines are very reasonably priced. They fit perfect in your garage and you don't need a lot of equipment to run these things. It's a very good option if you're looking to make a little extra money. All right, enough around, let's get started. The first thing we want to do in order to find this Langmuir Systems font is we're going to get on the internet and we're going to go to their website. All right, here we are on Langmuir Systems website. Make sure uh, you use that link to get to it if you do and make sure you check out some of their products. They got uh, all kinds of cool plasma tables and CNC milling machines. Anyways, we are here to get their logo. So here you can see we got Langmuir Systems logo. And if you have a MacBook, you can hit Shift Command 4 and you can just highlight what you want to take a picture of, snap that picture, and now we've got it. Now that we have that picture, we can go to Font Finder. There's all kinds of different choices for Font Finders. I'm just going to use this first one here, My Fonts. We'll go ahead and click on that one. Now you see, if you scroll down, type or paste your image URL here. We can upload an image. We're going to upload that screenshot. There it recognizes the lettering and it's allowing us to identify that font. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And here you can see we have a bunch of very similar fonts to Langmuir's logo. Now there's a couple of very distinct letters in Langmuir's font. You can see the A kind of comes to a point in that right corner and the U comes to a point in that bottom right corner. All the other letters look fairly similar to some of these other fonts, but those two, the A and the U, I want to pay attention to them. So we're going to scroll through and see if we could find any similar letters. I don't see any right here. They're very close, but they're not the same. All right, so here I found this Audio Wide Pro, and you can see the A and the U look exactly like the A and the U in Langmuir's logo. So we're gonna go ahead and write this down, Audio Wide Pro. Now you can see this font is $29 if you wanna buy it. That's kind of expensive. There's not a lot of people that want to do that because there are many sites out there with free fonts. So what we're going to do is we're going to write down Audio Wide Pro 
and we're going to go to free fonts. Now I have used this one before, 1001 free fonts. Like I said, there's a bunch of different sites. We'll click on this and we're going to search for audio wide. So there is audio wide and I've already typed in Langmuir and you can see that it all matches. Now the only thing that does not match on this font to Langmuir's logo is it's italicized and I may have said that wrong, I don't know, really don't care. But we need to get those letters kind of slanted. I didn't see any other fonts like that. So we're just gonna try to download it and see if we can italicize that in Fusion 360 to get the effect that we're looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this and then we're gonna go back to Fusion 360. All right, now we're gonna open our downloads. We're gonna click on the audio wide file, double click it and now it shows the font and then you can install it right here. I've already installed it, so it's telling me to replace, but this is where you would install that font. And once you do that, it will now be in your font library on your computer and it should also update it into the font library on Fusion 360. All right, now that we've got that font installed into our computer. Damn, I did good. It should automatically update the font library in Fusion 360. So we're gonna go ahead and open up Fusion 360 and see if it's in there. And then we can start building this logo. All right, we are now in Fusion 360. First thing we wanna do is get this um, plane orientated the way we want. So we wanna select the top. So we are now looking at the X and Y axis and the Z axis is coming straight up at us. This is how we would want the orientation to be if we were cutting steel on the CNC plasma table. We want it on the X and the Y plane or the X and the Y plane. Now the next thing we want to do is take the image of Langmuir's logo and we want to insert it as a canvas on Diffusion 360 so that we have something to work off of when we're building this logo. So we're gonna use the canvas tool right here. We're gonna click that, insert from my computer. We're going to find the Langmuir screenshot, open that up. It's gonna ask us what plane we want the X and Y. And it's a little bit small, so I'm just gonna scale that up a little bit bigger. And there we go. Now we've got our Langmuir Systems logo as a canvas in Fusion 360. Now that we have our canvas, we want to create a sketch. And we want it on the X and Y plane. And now we can start building this logo. Where I like to start is with the lettering. So I'm gonna use the line tool, which is L. And what I like to do is make my line right even with the bottom of the letters, and I like to make it the exact width of the whole word. Then I like to turn that line into a construction line by clicking it and hitting X. I like to use those construction lines as a reminder that it's a line that needs to be deleted at some point. Now we're going to right click that line, hit text on path. Now I have talked about text on path in some of my other videos, but I wanna get into a little bit more detail on it so I can show you all the features of this tool. All right, now that we've got our text box opened up here, we're gonna see if the font library was updated and we could find our audio wide file. There is our audio wide, so it did update the font library. And now you can see where it says sample text in the bottom left corner there. We're gonna type in what we want here. So we're gonna type in Langmuir in all caps, and you can see Langmuir down here, and we're gonna mess with the height of this, get it to match the logo the best we can. That's a little too big. All right, so that looks pretty good right there, but you can see that our spacing is a little bit off, and one way we can do this is to mess with the character spacing right here. We can just type in a couple different numbers here and just see what works best. Actually, that, that fits pretty well right there. But just to give you an idea, we can bump it up a little bit and you can see that we could really start putting some space in between those letters that way. Now the reason I like to make that text on path line the exact width as the word that we're trying to mimic here is because you can just hit this checkbox, fit to path, and it will automatically spread that lettering out to fit that line perfectly. And a lot of the times it will match up perfect to the word that you're trying to copy. Now other than that, you can see that the Letters are not slanted like the Langmuir logo. So we're gonna go ahead and try to hit the italic button. And it didn't do anything. So it must not have that feature in that font file. So I could probably dig a little deeper to find the correct font file. This one must not be the right one. 
But just for figuring out this process, we're just gonna go with it and act like it's the right one. Another tool you have here is this placement tool. You can place that lettering on either side of the line that you want. Over here on this flip tool, you can flip the lettering around. So there's all kinds of different ways that you can configure this lettering. Uh, this right here is obviously what we want. So now that we got everything about as close as we can, we'll go ahead and hit OK. Then I'm gonna come in here and click on the construction line. I'm gonna delete it. Then I'm going to right click on the lettering and I'm going to hit explode text. So now we actually have some vector lines to work with here. So I wanna go ahead and toggle off the canvas tool so we can see our new drawing. And you can see that the letters are green. That means that they are all in the fixed position. We're gonna click this tool here that looks like a lock, which is the fix and unfix tool. We're gonna to highlight it and it will turn it blue. Now we can actually manipulate these lines. Uh, they're not locked in place. Now we wanna kinda of close these in, make sure that there's no flaws with any of these letters. So we're just gonna get a rectangle, draw a rectangle around it and see what we got. So right here you can see all the letters look really good. They all kind of registered in there. They're all closed. Sometimes you'll have a flaw in these font files where there will be a, a very small spot that's open and it basically, when you click to highlight it, it won't register in there. And some of you guys may have had that problem. The lettering here all looks pretty good. So we do have this spot over here in the A. Uh, if we were to cut this the way it sits right now, this whole middle section would just fall right through. So what we want to do here is install a bridge. Now the way I like to do this, I just like to use the line tool, hit L, and I'm just going to manually draw a bridge in here. I'm just going to connect a couple of sections of the A, hit escape, and then I'm going to use the trim tool, and I'm going to trim out these sections here. And then you can see when we highlight this now, it's all registering as one piece. Well, without making this a one hour long video, that is the basic idea in taking someone's logo, identifying the font that's in it, getting it downloaded to your computer, and getting it into Fusion 360's font library so that you can actually work with it. It's really not too hard. I actually have a site that I subscribe to where I pay for their fonts just so I know I get good, clean files. If there are any other questions that you have about fonts, make sure you uh, let me know in the comments or you can email me at spicerdesignsllc at gmail.com. I do take the time to read all those emails and comments and respond to pretty much all of them, so don't hesitate to ask. All right, well that is going to wrap it up for today's video. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. I mean, f it, what's it gonna hurt? It's just a button, just hit it. And it's a great way to say thanks if you did find that video useful. Now, like I said at the beginning, I'd give you a little hint of what video is coming next on Fusion 360. And I'm gonna show you how I layer my signs on Fusion 360, how I create all my reference holes. I've got a couple of signs like this one where it's got multiple layers to it. And I've had a couple people ask in the comments how I do that. And don't forget to check out Langmuir Systems website. They got some really cool machines on there like this one, the Crossfire Pro. Make sure you use those links. It will save you some money. Anyways, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Damn it! <laughs>